what's up guys, Coach Mac, play fast football. I'm going to do a video on a request I got from somebody who was watching some things, uh, some videos I did a couple years back, and uh, we had talked about flipping our offensive line, playing with strong side linemen and quick side or weak side linemen. So uh, I'm going to go back and kind of reiterate some things with why we did it, what I was thinking at the time, um, because uh, one of our, one of my subscribers asked me to do it. All right, so make sure you check out our sponsors. Uh, Gauge track sideline replay system that, that we use on Friday nights. Uh, we have zero problems with it. It's awesome. We absolutely love it. Uh, high and tight, which is ball training secure, uh, ball security training aid that your players use. You have to have the proper points of contact, proper power, uh, proper points of pressure, excuse me, to have the ball beep. It makes an auditory beep when you have it held with your wrist in the right spot, wrist lock, tip split, ball against the forearm, against the rib cage, everywhere it needs to be, up against the chest, all the prop proper points of pressure, make the ball beep. If it doesn't beep, you're not doing it right. So check out high and tight. All right, Just Play uh, Football is the digital uh, tool, software tool that we use to diagram uh, our plays, uh, playbook stuff for me. Any um, any uh, clinics that I go to, it just it's it's a powerful way to make a presentation. So we love using uh, we love using Just Play for our stuff. Difference USA, which is the ultimate striking machine. We have one in our in our weight room currently. Uh, you can move it around. You work on uh, striking elbows in, thumbs up. It just locks into either your squat racks or you can set them up outside. You can use them year round. All right, it's great during a pandemic because we don't have to worry about body on body. It's just striking a hand shield and it's got different resistance um, springs in there to make it tougher as kids get stronger. So you can get thousands of reps striking elbows in, thumbs up, all right, without ever needing a partner. So make sure you check out Difference USA. Um, Baker Sporting Goods is the local sporting goods company that, that I use. They make all of our stuff, shirts like this. All right, all of our uh, all of our uniforms come uh, from Baker Sporting Goods and, and our spirit packs and uh, any of our fan items, our coaches' items, our sideline gear. Everything comes from Baker Sports. Um, they've been outfitting teams since 1997, so they do some stuff nationally as well, not just here in the southeast. So make sure you check out Baker's Sporting Goods and then uh, Dome Hats, which is the Headwear um, sponsor of um, Playfest Football and the high school that I'm currently at. This is my um, Playfest white Playfest Football hat that they did for us last year with the Playfest logo on the back. Great thing about Dome is you can make these hats custom. Uh, everything that you do, you can go online, have a custom online hat builder. You can go online and generate your own hat with your own logos, uh, your own stitching where you want to change the color to stitching, change the color of the eyelids, change the button up top, make the back, uh, snap back, make it Velcro, make it fitted. Um, change the the, uh, the build to different type of builds that they have and different styles of hats so you can customize and build your own hat. Every hat is a story. Let Dome help you tell your hat story. Make sure you check them out www.domeheadwear.co. Alright, so a couple years back I came up with, with a deal where um, I flipped my offensive lineman strong side and quick side. And the first reason I did that was the personnel at the time that I had. Uh, I had Two very different guards that were really, really good football players. One was um, a very physical six foot three, 315 pound kid that ended up playing at Kentucky. Very good player. All right, another one was a great high school offensive lineman. He was 5'7, 210 pounds. So two remotely different kids, remotely different skill sets. Um, the five foot seven kid we played on the weak or the quick side, and the six foot three, 315 pound kid we played on the strong side. And we flipped them with the formation. So every formation had a right or a left in it. All right. So um, you know all of our face, all of our formations started off as uh, you know even right, even left, trio right, trio left, deuce right, deuce left, Brooklyn right, Brooklyn left, Miami right, Miami left. All right. Spread right, spread left. Whatever it may be, you can name your formations anything you want to. But all of our formations had a right and a left in them. And then as soon as we started going up tempo stuff we would build a formation so like for us back in the day even right with a sniffer like this we used to just call nascar okay and that had a lot to do with how we call plays it had a lot to do with our snap counts it had a lot to do with our tempo so we built everything around that so i played the six foot three 315 pound kid at strong guard and i played the five foot seven 210 pound kid at quick guard. all right and then what we did was we ran certain plays certain ways only Okay, and, and the reason I did that was because I was trying to develop a certain skill set that I wanted those kids to have to run those plays so they would never have to run the other play. All right, so we always ran, just for instance, power to the strong side 
and counter, which at that time we were running OF, all right, counter to the weak side. Okay, so what that allowed me to do was the power play, which was very good to us at that time, a lot of power read, a lot of jet power read, tailback power read. Um, at that time, it allowed me to run power behind all right, my six foot three, 315 pound guard, then I had a six foot two, 300 pound tackle. I would run power behind those guys, and then the five seven, 210 pound kid was a much better skip pull up to a linebacker kid. Right, so we would only run power strong. We'd run counter weak because that allowed me to take my six foot three, 315 pound guard that was going to Kentucky and make him a kickout player. All right, so when everybody tried to wrong arm or spill. It was tough to do versus 6'3", 315 that's going to play Division One football in the SEC. What ended up happening was most people tried to cut them, as illegal as that is. All right, we can't cut them. You shouldn't be able to cut offensive linemen that are pulling. But people ended up trying to go to the thigh board or cut them because they couldn't spill because at 6'3", 315, and a very good athlete and player going to Kentucky, he was able to kick out. So I always wanted him as the counter kick out. I didn't want him as a rat player. I wanted the other kid as my as my rapper on the second level, and I wanted this kid as a kicker. I didn't want my 5'7", 210-pound guard kicking out because he had a little bit uh, he had a little bit harder time kicking out some 240-pound Division One defensive ends that we might have had on our schedule in the area that we play. Okay, so so what I did was power went strong, counter went weak, and then a lot of people would ask. They would say, "Well, are you always running power to the right?" No, I'm always running power strong. So when the formation changes. Power goes to the strong side. Well, how do the kids know that? Well, any power play that we called was always going to be run behind the strong side. They have to line up. They get lined up in a formation. Once they're lined up, they're on the strong side. They know that. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to line up. All right? So, like this set for us was, was NASCAR. Okay? Well, if I wanted to switch the strong side and the quick side, for argument's sake, like if I went trio, three by one, or tray, whatever, however you want to look at it, okay, you could just flip it to where you could put the strong side where you want it to. All right, so you could put, you know, that could be your strong side, and now you know which way you're going to run power, which way you're going to run uh, counter, right? And we used to do it with a sniffer here. We used to put the sniffer in three by one, actually, on that side. And now we run our read game, all right, with jet motion going that way. We run things coming back off of that. All right. For me, the way I used to do it, and this is part of the reason why we did it, because we started with tight end stuff way back in the day when I started as, as an offensive coordinator. I always set my fronts or call my formations to the tight end. So once we went to 10 personnel, for me, it actually worked out that the strong side of my line went to the single and the quick side of my line went to the trips. Okay, and I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but the reason that was was because back in the day when we were 11, the Y would be attached here, so that to me I would call like text right. All right, so that was trips to the X, who was away from the calls. So the Y always went to the call, so this would be text right or right text. All right, and that's the way we did it. So once we started going 10 personnel, we just opened it up and, and kept the Y out there, and then back here we kept the X, the Z, and the H. So for me, what ended up happening out of my tempo sets, this set actually started becoming, all right, Power read strong, quarterback counter back the other way. So when I built those plays in, not only did I like the skill set to say, look, strong guard, all right? You have to learn both for injuries and other things, but 90% of the time when, when you're working on certain skills, that strong guard was always working on kickout blocks when he pulled. Pull and kick, pull and trap, however you want to look at it. This guy was always working on rap stuff, right? So those guards got specific jobs that we catered to them and we tried to get as many reps as possible to make those jobs easier for them to do. Now, eventually, like I said, they all have to learn everything and do everything because of injuries, and your next best might not always be a backup guard or tackle. It might be, all right, you're six linemen, and he goes in, and then you make some adjustments around that. So you, you're definitely going to have to teach some other skills. But the bottom line was we, we like the idea of, of really refining certain skills with our stars and saying, look, when you pull, you're a rapper only. When you pull, you're a kicker only. We never had to waste time in practice teaching those kids, or a lot of time. We didn't spend a lot of time teaching the strong guard how to rap. All right, we spent some time, just in case of an injury, spent some time with the weak, with the quick guard, learning how to kick, just in case of an injury. But we didn't spend a ton of time with. It. Okay, what then ended up happening was I was able to call a lot of my plays in a very simplistic nature, 
all right, because it was always the same guys doing the same thing. So, like, for me in my formations, all right, my H back was my motion jet player when I was going, when I was getting ready to run jet sweeps and power read and quarterback counter. That was my H. Well, it just so happened that in three by one, my H was away from the strong side, and in two by two. So back in the day, these were the two sets we used the most. Two by two. And I'm talking about tempo sets that had sniffers, not tailbacks. So we would play 10 personnel, all right, and, and we would use a fullback sniffer as the back. We were really 20 personnel because my quarterback was my leading rusher on the team, or one of my leading rushers on the team. So everything was quarterback run based. But what would happen is I would end up in a situation where I could run the same plays with the same motions and call them the same thing and never get anybody confused. All right, and because it was the same guys doing the same jobs. So what I did was, all right, what I did was, it was the H is the motion guy, so I never had to tag a motion. So if we wanted to run power read, all right, if we wanted to run power read, like back in the day, we used to just say Purdue. All right, Purdue told everybody that we were running power read, because there's an R in it, all right, power read. All right, and we knew that the H was the, the H was the jet play. Okay, so what I did was I flipped these formations, and then I made two by two. Everything went to the right, and I came back, and in three by one, I would put it to the left, and now the H would be here. All right, and this would be my strong tackle and my strong guard. This would be my quick guard and quick tackle. So now in this formation. Power went over here, counter went over here. So power and counter didn't always go right or left, they went stronger or quick or weak. So now what I did was I had two by two, and when I was in two by two, the powers happened to the right, and the counters, all right, happened to the left, all right? So when I was in three by one, I just switched it, the powers happened, all right, to, in, in the three by one stuff, the powers happened to the left and the counters happened to the right. But they were all the same place. So, like, the two biggest ones for us were Purdue and Kansas. So, Purdue was power read with jet motion. All right, Kansas was quarterback count. So, for us, those are two of the biggest ones we ran all the time. So, you know, we would run this jet motion and run power read, and then we would come back off the jet motion, all right, and, and we would run quarterback count. So, quarterback counter always went weak for us. All right, so we would come back depending on how teams would set the front, what you'd get the three by one. All right, so let's just say for argument's sake, you've got some type of poach deal here. So after running power a bunch this way, we'd come back and, and we'd run, all right, we'd run jet sweep quarterback count. So those are two of the biggest ones. So what happened was the way I built the two by twos and the three by ones, it was always the H running the jet motion. So Purdue and Kansas were always the same play, and then the kids realized that I can run Purdue, and Purdue can be a play that goes to the left, and Purdue can be a play that goes to the right, and what I never had to do was I never used to have to say direction. All right, so I never said north, south, east, west, up, down, boy, girl, hot, cold. Never had to say it. Purdue was the only thing I ever said. Now, we would get into some situations in certain formations that we get stuck without the flexibility to do some other things. So, you know, eventually I went back to trying to get a little bit more flexible because an offensive guy, as an offensive guy, you're always looking for more flexibility. And then as years went on, two, three years in, people started, uh, you know, keying off the sniffer and started doing some things. Once we had a bunch of games on film and we had a lot of success. Now, the year we did this, we were 9-1. and one. All right, we averaged 44 points a game and... 300 yards rushing a game and 115 yards. We averaged like 440 or 50 yards a game on offense and 45 points. Just a lot of great numbers. And then subsequently, the next year or so after that, people started catching on to formations and tendencies and, you know, because teams watch film. So, you know, when we originally did it, the reason it was made is for tempo and I wanted simplistic plays. I wanted plays that when I said Purdue, I didn't call it jet motion. I never said H-jet, H-tear, F-tear, F-rip. I never said any of that. I said, Indy, Purdue, NASCAR, Purdue. And then because the kids had to line up and they knew where the strong side of the formation was, they knew that Purdue was always going strong because it started with a P and it was a power play. 
All right. Once I flipped the formation and the strong side kids are on the left, they knew that Purdue was going, all right, was going to the left now because that's where the strong side is. So originally I had some guys questioning God, the kids won't remember that. And I said, okay, if the strong side lineman has to line up right or left before we ever call a play, once he gets lined up, he knows what side he's on. The quick guard is always going to pull behind the center. He's got to get lined up before we ever call a play. Once he's lined up, now he knows if he's on the left, power's going right. If he's on the right, power's going left. We actually, we had really no, once we started teaching it, we really had no issues. It was more, the only issues we had were coaches that were worried that it would never work because you didn't give it direction. We weren't giving holes, so it wasn't, you know, 28 toss. It wasn't 23 or 24 ISO or 32 trap. It, it had nothing to do with that. It was just words, and the words had meaning to them. So Purdue had meaning. It was power, which meant it was going strong. It had an R in it, so it meant we were going to read it. Okay? And then, like, I would run quarterback counter, and I would call that Philadelphia. Or, I'm sorry, quarterback power. And we'd call that Philadelphia. So what we taught our kids was Philadelphia was power. All right? No read. There's no R in it. Don't read it. All right? So that became power, fake jet. And now we would kick with the T. Down block, back block, pull and wrap. And that would be pure QB power, no read. This was a read QB power. Why? Because it had an R in it. All right? It had an R in it. And then this I kind of threw in. I said, all right, look, the H is in there. We're going to fake it to the H. Philadelphia means we're faking the jet to the H. Quarterback power, no read. All right? Took it a step further. Portland. All right? Portland was power read with the tailback. All right? So when I word associated, I told the kids, hey, Purdue is power read with the H. All right? If I want to read it with the T, I'll call Portland because Portland is now power read with the tailback. Later on, in different offenses, Portland became power read with a toss. So you're always trying to word associate things to kids. So we had Purdue, Philadelphia, Portland. The good thing was I could run power eight different ways as long as I had different ways to call it in the backfield. But up front, they knew it was going strong side, and they knew what the blocking scheme was. So I had, you know, we had jet power read, tailback power read. We had regular tailback powers. We had everything that we wanted, all right, with just using P words. And then the greatest thing about it was these all ended up becoming signals. So we taught it using word association, but once we started playing, those became signals. Okay, so, you know, Purdue became whatever the, single, the signal was. Portland became whatever that signal was. Might have been pouring in a glass or whatever it was. And Philadelphia, you know, might have been eagles or whatever the signal was. So we taught the plays with word association, and then after that, they all became hand signals. So you didn't have to worry about saying words at the line of scrimmage. Everybody looked over to the line to the side. Play got signaled in. We went from there. Our snap counts got built into the formations. So you had right and left. All right, like I said, you had even right, even left. You had spread right, spread left. Trio right, trio left. Text right, text left. Open right, open left. Whatever the formations were, they had a right and a left. Until I wanted to speed the tempo up, and then we would set the formation. So NASCAR was always even right. All right, so NASCAR was even right with the sniffer up. Indy was always trio left with the sniffer or with the or trio right with the sniffer up so i always set the formations a certain way when i went and asked our indy daytona packers things like that and those became tempo deals because they didn't have a right or a left the kids knew how to line up because they were taught with a right or a left but the calls didn't have a right or a left in them so that's how i changed the snap count all right so we changed the snap count that way we changed formations and then terminology wise it just became real easy because powers went strong counters went weak all right so that's just a little bit of how and why we flipped our O-line and played with strong side, weak side guys. Got to remember in high school, uh, we weren't drop backing. We, there were drop back pass for us with that team was no more than six, eight times a game. So I wasn't really worried about who the left tackle was like they are in college in the NFL. That's the money maker. If it's a right-handed quarterback, you got to protect his blind side. We don't drop back. We, you know, we're, we were more quick game, uh, some, some option screen game, um, some quick game boot but very few six to eight dropbacks a game, we would throw play action with seven or eight man protection and max shots down the field. So we really didn't worry about who the left tackle was. We were, I built it around the run game and I built it around the ability to um, come up with a, uh, a nomenclature, a verbiage, um, a system of coding plays that was very simple to call, very simple to learn, all right? And then eventually we, you know, I kind of got caught in that simplicity and when I had, you know, when it was time to change, I needed to, you know, we needed to change and do some other things, but the simplicity was the beauty of it, and I still refer back to that. 
when I talk to coach a lot of time about trying to keep things as simple as possible and keep the terminology, the vernacular, keep things simple that kids can learn. So that's why we did it. I had a lot of success with it early on. Took teams about two to three years to catch on, and I needed to wrinkle things. I didn't do a good enough job adding and wrinkling things to put in some plays that would take you away from the sniffer and things like that. So that's my fault. But uh, very good to us, very good system. We don't um, we don't necessarily flip our alignment anymore. We play the right side and left side now. Uh, but um, you know that, that's that's up to you how you do it. I got asked the question of how I used to do it. That's how we used to do it. We liked it when we did it. All right, and it was good to us for, for when we first started doing it. Uh, make sure you click the subscribe button all right, to be a subscriber to the channel. Make sure you turn the notifications on so you know every time we do a video. Make sure you give a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you like the content or don't so we know what content to do. Leave me a message or ask a question in, in, the, uh, in the messages or in the comments section because this is actually a video I did because somebody asked me a question somewhere in the comments section or sent me an email. So leave me a, a comment. I try and get back to every comment that I can see. I appreciate everything you guys do. If you're playing football in the playoffs, good luck. If your season ended, good luck to your, uh, your off-season studies. If your season starts in January, good luck. Hopefully you guys will be able to play. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. Catch you guys next time.